I will always be grateful to Melville J. Herskovitz for the contribution he made to my sense of self. This man said that like every other people on earth, I had a culture and that it, that it could be traced back to a place called Africa. But the connection between Africa and American black people wasn't a new idea. Du Bois had written about it decades before Herskovitz. But Herskovitz is able to add the data that they just don't have access to. It's understandable that some people resisted the thought that central to understanding African American studies could be a book by, by a white person. Was Herskovitz able to do so much research on these questions because he's white? because he had a certain kind of privilege that other black scholars didn't have? Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Bahasham, Yahweshai, Bahasham, Rachachachwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders, a great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the elect. Those of you who are coming back to the Most High God, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in these latter days, via the sacrifice made by his only begotten son, Hamashiach Yahweshai, through whom we have received the Holy Spirit. All right. And now can hope for the day of redemption. As we walk through the straight gate, right, by Hashem in the name of Rechakwadash, the Holy Spirit that has been sent, all right, from on high into the minds of the servants, the prophets, to preach and teach this word, singing a new song, and those who have ears to hear and eyes to see will dance to the tune, all right, and a remnant is being gathered and will be gathered according to biblical prophecy, all right, in the awakening all right, is the beginning process of us being entered, all right, into perfection, into everlasting life, all right? It starts with us receiving the Holy Spirit, all right, receiving the Holy Spirit of promise, turning back to who we are, all right, understanding our purpose, you know, understanding the name of our power, all right, through his only begotten son and the legacy tied to those names, all right, has given us the spirit to repent, all right, and put off all of the idols and the lies that once ruled and governed our lives, okay? Now, I wanted to do a lesson in response uh, to this video. It was uploaded by the Elder Apostle Gabar, all right, as you can see here, Daily Edification 4. Understand one thing, the top wicked elite of Esau knows the exact truth of who we are all right and that's true all right which is why they do everything in their power all right to um take you backwards all right no matter if it's what they're putting in the food of uh the music um the uh education it's all to throw you off this whole thing called Babylon the Great, this spiritual Sodom in Egypt, is a snare to the souls of you Israelites. There's nothing but snares all around this place. And he makes sure that everything, all right, separates you from your power, okay? Now, the video that the uh, apostle is responding to was uploaded uh, by this channel here, uh, Arrows of Indignation 144, all right? Some uh, real powerful clips on this page, Um if brothers want to do response videos and, you know, need some topics, go to this page and um, there's a, a lot to respond to. Now, the title of this video is Esau has always known who we are. White House memo from 1969. Listen up. And as you can see here on this video, White House memo of 1969 under Nixon a complete demon, all right, called the Igbo Jews of West Africa. Now, Igbo, all right, goes back to Hebrew, Ibaria, 
okay? And we have uh, various videos going into the history of our people who were, who were in West Africa. You got to remember, we were uh, prophesied to flee, all right, the uh, Roman captivity after there was a decree given, all right, that all of the Jews be expelled, all right? And from there, we went into the interiors of, you know, Africa. A lot of us ended up in West Africa. Some of us went to parts of Europe. And uh, from there, ultimately, prophecy will be fulfilled that we would be brought over here to the Americas, all right, to serve our final captivity. All right, now, the Northern Kingdom was already in the Americas, all right, but the bulk of the Southern Kingdom, all right, were brought all right, over into, all right, the captivity of Babylon and Great Via, the sub-Saharan slave trade and the transatlantic slave trade, okay? And that's history um, we go into. But um, within this lesson, we're going to play this, and I wanted to give history of two ish Edomites, all right, two uh, little hats because they're catching on to the term small hat. Now, everywhere you look, you see people saying small hat. And that's the influence of this Israelite uh, awakening. The whole world is changing. All right. If you look at what we do, all right, when we got into the incense and the stones, all right, all Jake started getting into the incense and the stones. Okay. When we uh, uh, start getting on those uh, little hats. All right, you started to see Jake everywhere start to call him exactly that. All right, because the influence of this word is what's changing this world. So I'm going to play this video because I want to get into the deception of Esau Edom. And again, they have always known who we are. The, the powers and rulers of this world know exactly who we are. Okay, so let's take a listen to this and then we're going to get some edification on the deception of that these devils have put forth to confuse us and throw us off from who we are. White House memo of 1969 under Nixon called the Igbo Jews, called the Igbo Jews of West Africa. So it says here, in a White House memo dated Tuesday, January 28, 1969, to President Nixon, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger described the Igbos as the wandering Jews of West Africa. Now, why were they the wandering Jews? Because after fleeing that Roman persecution, all right, we ended up being scattered into different parts of Africa, different parts of Europe. All right, we always go into that history. All right, and wherever we settled, you know, we kept particular customs and traditions. All right, but the uh, powers that be always knew that we were the Jews. They called them wandering Jews because we were wandering from our land as prophecy okay as a matter of fact let's get that in the book of luke luke the uh 21st chapter all right and yahweh shai prophesied of this day of 70 a.d you know close to 40 to 50 years before it happened okay let's get the book of luke 21 in 24, this is speaking of what happened in 70 AD, which you have these Egyptology cats saying that the, everything about the Bible is fake. Well, well, what happened in 70 AD? What is the Archetitis? <laughs> anyway, it says Luke 21 and 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. All right. And shall be led away captive into all nations. See, in Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. OK, so from 70 A.D., all right, we went into the, the interiors of Africa and various different, you know, um, parts of these various different regions. OK, and we were uh, settling there, wandering around in these various different places, freeing, uh, fleeing the Roman persecution. And from there, all right, a, the, the, a, a lot of us, a lot of the Jews, because it was primarily Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, okay, again, the uh, northern kingdom were already in the Americas, all right, 
Why do you think Christopher Columbus, when he came over to the Americas, he had a Hebrew interpreter? We saw a video where these Egyptology cats were bringing that history out, Tariq Nasheed, all right? And they were like, uh, 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 you know, Columbus had an interpreter speaking African language. No, the interpreter, all right, he knew Hebrew, Arabic, all right? First and foremost, because Columbus knew via the Apocrypha, all right, that the Israelites had to be in this region where he was going. So he he brought along a Hebrew interpreter because he was going to meet Hebrew people. And there's various books going into when these uh, particular Edomite, you know, uh, scholars and researchers settled in these places. All right. The uh, there were Israelites here. OK, we have books going into that, you know, Lost Tribes and Promised Land is a, is a good one. OK, but why would uh, uh, Columbus need a Hebrew interpreter? All right, to come to the Americas because the Northern Kingdom, okay, pursuing what's written in Second Edges, were already over here. Okay, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, okay, settled in various parts of Africa, but primarily a lot was in West Africa because if you look at the position of West Africa, it's right there on the horn to where we were going to be brought into slavery, okay, on ships. OK, we would be led captive into all nations once. All right. We left. All right. Uh, uh, you know, we're kicked out of uh, Rome. You know, it took some years. We weren't directly as soon as we left Rome. We went into captivity. But leaving Rome, being kicked out because of the persecution. OK, it was illegal. All right. Because of the preaching of the uh, followers of Yahweh Shai and the insurrection of the Jews who didn't want to pay the taxes. OK, the, there was an order to kick us to hell out. All right. And you remember Nero and all of that stuff. So from that point on, Jerusalem, OK, the actual landmass will be under the control and trotting down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. All right. And we're at the time where the time of the Gentiles is being fulfilled. You see. And ultimately, the Lord's purpose is to bring us back into that land, but in a great fashion, even greater fashion, as we're going to be entered into the new covenant, given new bodies and new Jerusalem is going to come down. All right. From heaven. See. Now. Let's read. Let's go back to this video. And as you can see here. We'll let him uh, say it, read it. And you can look these things up on your own as well. Tuesday, January 28, 1969, to President Nixon, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger described the Igbos as the wandering Jews of West Africa. Gifted, aggressive, westernized, and best envied and resented, but mostly despised by their neighbors in the Federation. So these Igbos, Henry Kissinger said that these Jews were wandering Jews, meaning they were scattered uh, people. White House memo of 1969 under Nixon called the Igbo Jews called the Igbo Jews of West Africa. So it says here, in a White House memo dated Tuesday, January 28, 1969, to President Nixon, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger described the Igbos as the wandering Jews of West Africa. Gifted, aggressive, westernized, and best envied, and resented, but mostly despised by their neighbors. So there you go. All right, and you can look this up. It's, uh, it's, it's freely given information, but of course... It's suppressed, right? Because the, the overall arching idea that is presented unto us is that those people who came on slave ships were Africans, all right, which are Hamites, you see? And the elite that, that run this whole setup know exactly who we are. And you wonder why there's so much hell put on us and why we have this brutal history. Well, let's go back to what Esau said in Genesis the 27th chapter okay which pretty much going back to the garden okay it was a prophecy that the seed of the serpent which will be fulfilled of course Cain who came back as Esau all right the the, the seed of the wicked you know which how did they get into the earth well th through the righteous through uh, uh, Adam and through Isaac all right, would have what? Enmity, friction 
with the seed of the woman, the, 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 the chosen lineage, which would come through, of course, Seth. And then, all right, uh, through uh, uh, Jacob. See? Basically, uh, Cain and Abel returned as Jacob and Esau, but that's a whole other lesson. Now, let's hear Esau's mindset towards Jacob. In uh, verse 41, Genesis 27 and 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing. See, they know you have a blessing. All right. Now, if you look at what the elite are doing to the earth, okay, they're they're pretty much destroying everything. They're trying to recreate creation. They try to create man in their own image, all right, because what they are trying to do is set up eternal life via a left hand blessing. They're trying to create their own birthright, okay, because when you go into the uh, the uh, the understanding of it, all right, they don't have any repentance. They they cried for the blessing of the firstborn. All right. But ultimately, it was already given unto Jacob before Jacob and Esau were born. The Lord just created a dramatic story all right to help forward along his word okay so esau hated jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him and esau said in his heart the days of the morning of my father are at hand then will i slay my brother jacob now he never got a chance to slay jacob all right but the seed of the serpent all right the descendants of esau edom the descendants of the wicked would have friction, all right, with the seed of the woman, which the woman is Israel. So if you're wondering why these people have had a constant foot up your ass, they've constantly tried to poison you, they've, they constantly try to throw you off your deem, even in regular conversation with an Edomite, you can hear a deceiving, deception, conniving, okay? Uh, 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 you know, they have a, a way about them when it comes to Jake. They always want to touch you. All right. They're, they're very, uh, you know, there's like a, a love hate relationship. They know you're blessed, but at the same time, they want to destroy you. You see, in the powers that be that rule this world. All right. The true supremacist, because you can't be supreme over another nation unless you can control that nation's food quality that nation's education quality that nation's air quality water quality that's a supremacist the supremacist is not someone standing on a street corner prophesying of what's going to happen because they try to call us black supremacists no no so-called black is supreme in the system of edomite supremacy you're supreme okay let's get the word supremacist or supreme let's go to the etymology online and look the word up all right, and they're supreme via their blessing because the Lord gave them power. Okay, uh, in these times. Okay, and we're gonna get um, into some history of these two Edomite-ish <laughs> people. All right, who um, are known as the fathers of African American studies. Okay, because they know who we are. But we're gonna show you the deception of this devil. All right, and how. He duped our people, <laughs> all right, into believing that they're African. The word supremacist or supreme, let's first look up supreme, to be supreme, all right? Supreme is the highest. Now, who's the highest at this time? Now, supreme ist, okay, a ist is uh, like ish, I mean, I'm not ish, ism. Okay, ist is a suffix. Okay, so a race ist, all right, is is, is um, you know, into his race. He prefers his race above the rest of all of the other races. Okay, but a a, a supremist, okay, is he supreme above the rest? Okay, a supremist right here is one who holds supreme authority. Okay, so. We have to understand when we get Genesis, the uh, 27th chapter, Jacob and Esau were blessed. Okay. Esau was blessed here. 
in verse 39, and Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. So you would control the earth. You would control the oil, the resources, and the dew of heaven from above. You'd be good. Okay? When did the Edomites have the fatness of the earth for any of you Christian scholars? When? When did Esau rule? Okay? Well, it was through the uh, Romans. Okay? But it was fully fulfilled. All right. Through the revival of Rome, which is Babylon, the great. OK, the NATO and the EU, this B system. All right. And with that. OK. And it said uh, and he and thou shall live by thy sword. Basically, you will be blessed with a great military now with their supremacy. OK, let's get this. Revelation 11 and 8 and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt and Esau's rulership. OK. The dead bodies of the Israelites will lie in the street of the great city. Now, why would they be dead? OK. Let's get the book of Proverbs. OK, the book of Proverbs, I believe, 29 or 26. Proverbs 21 and 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. OK, so when we were brought over here on cargo slave ships. OK. Esau, Edom beat the Hebrew out of us. OK. We were singing Hebrew songs on those ships. Kumbaya. What does that mean? Come near. Yah. Who's Yah? OK. Uh, Yah is the most high God. Yahweh. OK. We were we were speaking Hebrew. OK. But they try to suppress the records and, 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 and pretty much eventually, all right, what they did to the, the northern kingdom, they, they brought them through those board schools, okay, and, and, and they couldn't speak their native tongue, which they were speaking dialects that were tied to Hebrew, okay. But what this devil did, all right, resulted in us becoming what? Dry bones. See? We would we didn't have any understanding. OK, he bound a strong man and ruined. All right. The spoil, the family, the goods. So the dead bodies of the Israelites were lying in the street of the, the, the great city, Babylon, a great, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, where the ways of righteousness were exed out. OK, here in Babylon, the great. You see, and they of the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their bodies to be put in graves. They I mean, and they wouldn't cover our shame. OK, they ultimately benefited from the ignorance of the Israelites. This is how this nation became the richest nation this earth has ever seen are off of the backs of Israelites. OK, 200 plus years of free labor and you're 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 you're. Wondering why you're why we're at the bottom and you're at the top. <laughs> you see, but this was a punishment. And the three days and a half is from around 1619 to around the 60s. You see, we had no open vision. It was really just kind of like, what the hell is going on? You know, around, the you know, even before the 60s, you had, you know, a few Israelites here and there who would, would come with the understanding. But the true understanding all right, started to come around the 60s, you know, when uh, Elder Abba Bivens was raised up, you know, leading, you know, to, uh, you know, the old school eventually. And then, you know, the apostles and elders. All right. And then you have the great awakening. All right. You had other men teaching as well. All right. But it, it cannot be denied because I was there. All right. I, and when we came in, we didn't have no biases. All right. We there were a few te teachers on the internet, but we, we saw through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua, the apostles and elders were the ones who were fervently teaching, constantly going into all of these topics, and they all right, uh, told us, we got to get out there. No other teacher told us that. You had Nate, okay, who he was selling breakdowns. You have uh, Elder Rakov, GOCC, he was around here and there. Yohanna would pop up all right, every uh, eight months. You know, Zabak was always there. You got to give it to him. OK, but, you know, at the end of the day, all of these men. All right. Were used. All right. And what, what came from that was a great awakening. 
See, but before that, all right, these nations benefited off of our ignorance. Verse 10, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Okay, Joel goes into that because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. They knew the history of King David. They know the history. They know who we are. They know you're the two prophets. They know you're Judah and Ephraim. You see, so to have you down in a in a you know destitute state, these devils were, were rejoicing. All of the heathen were rejoicing to finally get this once powerful people, okay, uh, the the in a in a in a in a, in a uh, destitute state. Let's get the scripture. They clapped their hands. A bird visited me. Shalom. <laughs> Okay. I love birds. I have one who built a nest actually in front of this window. But I think he moved. He probably went and got some uh, new bird coochie. But anyway, let's get this just quote to scripture because I'm having uh, internet issues. Um, so somebody can post it on the comment board as well. But it's Lamentations 2 and 15. It's a good thing I already have uh, up what I need up. The internet went out. But it says, all that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem. Saying, is this the city that men called the perfection of beauty? The joy of the whole earth? All right, And that's the sentiment. All right, They, they, they love to, to, to see Jake in a destitute state because they know we're superior as far as physical attributes, all right? But to have us in such a destroyed state, okay, and, and rule over us and to finally see us, you know, drop, which that goes into uh, what was going on in the uh, Neo-Babylonian Empire. But the same sentiment follows as that which is in is now in Babylon the Great, okay? They love to see us in a, in a destroyed state. All right. And the elites of these different nations. OK, because, you know, the regular, you know, Joe Sixpack Edomite, you know, the uh, regular, you know, uh, rice guzzling, you know, Moabite, you know, they don't know that we're the chosen people of the Lord. But the elites of their people know. Which goes into uh, Psalms, the uh, 82nd chapter. OK, they have all consented together with one consent to cut off the name of Israel from being a name in the earth. All right. And one of the ways that they did it was through feeding us these lies about who we are. And we're going to get into that. OK, so again, Revelation 11 and 10, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall sing gifts one to another. Slave trade. You know, traded us for musket guns, wine, you know, broke up families. OK, and, and during that time when we were in hardcore slavery, OK, they used to beat the shit out of us and ultimately uh, uh, make us take on different identities, accept different names. Right. But they remember why did they do this? Because they remember. All right. The throne of David, these two prophets judah and ephraim northern and southern kingdom tormented them because when king david <laughs> what led to solomon being able to have 40 years of peace was king david kicking ass him and his military his army but after three days and a half the spirit of life from god entered into them and that starts the process of us moving to immortality okay and they stood up on their feet and great fear fell on them, which saw them. And then the next verse goes into our deliverance. All right. So while we were in this dead state, OK, we know that these uh, scientists and, you know, researchers, you know, you know, they had all of these theories of, you know, how man was created. You know, a lot of the theories told us we came from monkeys and this and that. So what we're going to talk about real quick which I've done lessons on this before is a throughish fathers of so-called African-American studies. 
All right, because what you're going to find out is while you had a bunch of these devils coming up with all of this pseudoscience and these theories about who we were and the origin, you know, and our race and all of this stuff, you know, saying we were monkeys, you have these two particular, which there were others as well, but these are the two main ones. You had these two particular so-called throughs, okay, J-O-Os, all right, Little Hats, Melville Hertzkowitz, all right, and Franz Boas, all right, who so-called rejected, you know, the uh, so-called uh, scientific racism, all right, that was associated, all right, with our people, all right, and what they came up with is theories, okay, linking us to African-American heritage and saying, basically, they're not monkeys. They do have a heritage. So a lot of Jake accept these two individuals as the good J.O.O.s because they linked us to our true heritage. All right. And what you're going to find out, OK, is when you hear these so-called pro-black Egyptology cats talk, they love to say, well, the Bible was uh given unto you by the so-called white man all right but where did egyptology come from here it is all you have to do is look up list of egyptologists all right and this is how they all look whether it's a male or female a lot of them are french and german okay the ones who broke down the uh, hieroglyphs you know uh, this individual uh champulian this guy here this is the guy who, you know, uh, broke down the uh, hieroglyphs, which you see where his hand is, all right? And our people take hold to all of their um, madness, and, and there's a lot of them. And when you click on all of these, they're all Edomites for the most part, okay? 98% Edomites, okay? These are the Egyptologists, okay? Okay. And they say we get our doctrine from the so-called white man, which is a damn lie. All right. Now, in slavery, OK, Esau did use the Bible to play mind games and use it for the purpose of witchcraft. All right. They took about 70 percent of the Bible out and they presented to us what is called a slave Bible. And we've done lessons on that. If you don't know that history, um, you can look it up. All you have to do is type it um, in the uh the slave bible and it'll give you that uh, history okay slave bible remove passages to instill obedience and uphold, uphold slavery okay and ultimately uh, they, they tell on themselves you see See if we can. My name is Anthony Schmidt, and I am senior curator at the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. We are in our newest exhibit, or one of our newest exhibits, uh, titled The Slave Bible, Let the Story Be Told. The formal name is Parts of the Holy Bible Selected for Use Among, ne among the Negro Slaves in the British West India Islands. And it was published in 1807 in London by the, the uh, London-based firm Lon Gilbert. Well, we think it was most likely produced by a missionary organization named the Society for the Conversion of Negro Slaves. And this was one of many missionary societies that popped up around 1800, dedicated to spreading Christianity uh, around the globe, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly within the British colonies. So what you'll find out is Christianity has nothing to do with the truth of the Bible, and the slave masters never used the Bible to uplift us tell us we're Israelites, tell us we shouldn't be eating this. They took out 70% of the Bible and manipulated particular verses, all right, to uh, keep us uh, mentally subjected to them, okay? And you can look that history up. Just type in slave Bible. This is the better um, video here, all right? But for the sake of the lesson, you know, you just look that up on your own. Slave Bible remove passages to instill obedience and uphold slavery. You can look that up on your own. Okay, so this narrative that 
you know, somehow, some way, what we're teaching comes from the slave master. No, that's what's being taught in the church. And ironically, all right, when you really dig deep, all right, the Christian doctrine, Christianity does have its roots, all right, in Egyptian and Babylonian uh, mythology and garbage, okay? And the Bible rejects that when you go into it. But when you look up all of these Egyptologists, okay, this is what they look like. You see? And us, all right, boasting and being African Americans, okay, that came from two small hats. How about that? All right? Melville Herskovitz, okay, these are the fathers of anthropology, okay, and Franz Boas, okay? And this day in Ish history, 1963, the white Ish father of African studies dies, all right? Melville Herskovitz didn't buy the anthropomorphic, okay, theories that blacks were inferior. See, that's ultimately the, uh, the uh, that was the standard doctrine, okay? And they still have that doctrine. They still have that mindset. It's just hidden you know, under, you know, rhetoric and all of this, you know, it's science now. Okay. But ultimately, um, when you check this out, these two individuals, all right, rejected the theories of us being linked to monkeys and three fifths of a human being and savages. All right. They came with the mindset. No, they do have a culture and linked us to African American, African ham, hamedic, uh, customs, we're, we're the children of Ham, okay? And you can look this up, but that's who Melville Herskovitz is. And then you have uh, uh, this individual, uh, Franz Boas, okay? Which when you check this out, this is one of his speeches, Franz Boas, on African achievements, see? And how to challenge racism. So they were looked at as the good guys, okay? Franz Boas, 18... 85 to 1942 was a ish German American anthropologist trained in Berlin. Okay. Who eventually made his name as a professor at Columbia university in New York city. All right. His own lifelong experience with anti sim prejudice and his research experiences living among, all right, the uh, Inuit and peoples of the Pacific Northwestern led him. All right. To a un unequivocally, all right, uh, progressive cultural, all right, relativism, relativism, all right. He explicitly argued against the presumption that white European civilization was the benchmark against which the measure non-European societies, all right, and insisted that environment and culture rather than race shape physical features and ways of thinking, all right. Although he was not completely free of the prejudices of his time, his insights nevertheless inspired anthropologists like Margaret Mead and sociologists like W.E.B. Du Bois, all right, who was a sellout. All right, a lot of people say um, his father, he was, he was really an Edomite. Um, I never really looked into it, but I've heard that uh, multiple times. But, you know, you have a lot of these uh, these individuals all right, when you go into the history of uh, the NCAA or the NAA, the NCAA, the NAACP, all right, the uh, founders of that are all ish people using Jake, all right, for a particular purpose, okay, and to control uh, uh, your mindset, your rebellions, and everything else. Civil rights was another snare, all right, BLM, another snare. All of these things have been uh, uh, cultivated by your enemy okay to keep you walking in circles 40 years in the wilderness okay it says let me jump to this in 1906 w.e.d.b du bois invited boaz to atlanta university to speak to the graduating class okay <laughs> and jake thinks you know w.e.b du bois and all of these you know uh civil rights and black power you know um these black power, you know, these people, they forced down your throat during Black History Month. All right. Because W.E.B. Du Bois, he wasn't around during the civil rights era, but it all links. And 
Jake thinks that these people are actually their leaders. You have to understand if if your enemy is forcing a leader down your throat, then you have to um, look into that. What is what is it all about? Like MLK, Michael Luther King, because that's his real name, Michael Luther King, not Martin Luther King. OK, um, he was set up and that that mindset of wanting to be accepted marching is still instilled in Jake until this day. All right. But they don't present to you the other side of MLK. All right. When he was a rebelling and pretty much had realized that he led his people into a burning house. They don't talk about that. See, that's some hidden, you know, the, the you know, the it's out there, but they don't pro, pro present that to you Israelites. To keep you with this mindset that this dream which the scriptures tell you about that. OK, these prophets that have a dreams of their own heart. Jeremiah 23, the Lord ain't with that. OK, somebody can put that on a comment board so that the believers and watchers can 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 see it. All right. But let me keep going. All right. It says. Um, in his address. He chronicled a history of of African contributions to human civilization. See, he, he was set up to go to these schools. OK, and teach Jake that they were Africans. Right. Which ultimately the Africans are the Hamites. Now, when you go into uh, the the Zondervan's Bible dictionary. OK, when you look up Ham, it tells you he's he's the he's the progenitor. Of the dark races, but not the Negro. They know that there's a difference between the Negro and the so-called African, the Hamite. OK. The so-called Negro is Shemitic. The so-called African is Hamitic. You see? And you can look at their spirit and tell that they're a different nation of people than us. And it's funny, when you go into these Egyptologist uh, movements, all right, Sonetta TV, the House of Congress, it's no Hamites. It's nothing but Jake, niggas, arguing back and forth. Now they've lost, you know, uh, uh, their grip. So all they do is use the Hebrew Israelites to boost up their platform. And Jake allows them to do it. All right. But that's all right, because, hey, the, the, the heavenly father is working. You, know, you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth, man. But when you when you read this speech, OK, he's basically. Set up to come link Jake to being Africans. You see. So. In his address, he chronicled the history of African contributions to human civilization and encouraged the students to be as clear eyed about the nobility of their heritage as they had to be about the challenge of improving the, the lot of African-Americans in a society uh, riven by racism or driven by racism. Importantly, he drew on the experience of the small of the uh, little hats in Europe to point out the depth of such divisions all right, so here it is. He 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 he's going there and he's presenting to them, look, we're the true chosen people, right? And this is what we go through. All right, we can we have a lot in common actually. Okay? Du Bois later said this speech uh, uh, occasioned an awakening for him, leading him to realize how African history had been silenced and distorted. So again, let's get this scripture real quick in the book of Isaiah the 30th chapter. OK. <laughs> I start at one. Woe to the rebellious children, say of the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin unto sin. And, and these coverings are all tied to idol worship. When you look up this word covering, Internet came back on. So this is hours later. I'm finishing this video, but it's all good. OK, the, the prince of the power of the air is at work. All right. This word covering. OK, just like we uh, we showed you, you know, that whole Wakanda concept. There's a lot of idol worship in that. And that whole X symbol where, where they cross their, their, their hands. All right, that goes back to Canaan. That goes back to Babylon. That goes back to Egypt. All right. So Jake is being led to the slaughter. This is why we have to detach ourselves from these concepts of black and all of this stuff that these devils have presented unto us. We're supposed to throw it away. OK, but you still have some Israelites who want to hold to those things. All right. The word is ma 
Uh, ma saka, okay? All right, pouring out libation, molten metal, cast image, drink offering, libation, covenant, sacrifice, molten metal, all right, covering, veil, okay? The root word is nasak, to pour out, okay, to install. So you've been instilled with a, 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 a different covering, okay? This is all dealing with idol worship. Molten metal, images, drink offering. You're, you're, you're doing offerings to other gods when you take on these various different cultures that have nothing to do with you. And then, all right, Jake has become the biggest atheist, all right, and now Jake is against the scriptures, okay? Our people are big time against the scriptures. They, they're going to voodoo, all right, uh, the, the either Egyptology, voodoo. Okay, the, the, the Hinduism, they're into all manner of coverings. They're not covering themselves with the true covering. Jake is walking naked. See? And what does the scripture say about uh, uh, being naked? In the book of, uh, I think that's uh, Revelation, the 19th chapter. Jake is walking naked. Okay, Re Revelation 16 and 15. Behold, I come as a thief. All right. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. What is your gar garments? The covering. This knowledge, wisdom and understanding your true culture, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And our people are going to be ashamed. All right. Because here it is. The Lord has sent them prophets. OK. And they're still mocking and talking all of this crap about the Bible. We bring out the ancient customs. OK. They're, they're the first to come and mock us. I remember Sinetter mocked. The Leverian marriage, all right, where if, uh, you know, uh, if you have two brothers and one has a big inheritance and the one, w you know, with the inheritance dies, okay, and he doesn't have a son, okay, well, the, uh, the brother would have to put a seed in the woman, his wife, the, the, the widow, all right, and Sonetta mocked that, but don't you know that that's still practiced to, uh, to this day in many African cultures? But I thought we needed to go back to Kemet, Africa, which Kemet is a Hebrew word, ham, ham. Ham is ham is the same thing. That's where you get your Kemetic science. Okay? Ham, ham, Kemetic. Basically like chemistry, heat. Okay? Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japhet, okay? And all of the descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japhet have, all right, records of the flood. So just because you have the uh, uh, the flood written about in Hermetic writings does not mean the Bible stole it from them. It's just that all of these various different cultures passed down the knowledge. You see, we didn't get the Torah until Egypt. When we were uh, exodus out of Egypt, all right, and Moses went up into the mount. So, yeah, there were other histories and writings before the Torah. That doesn't make the, the that doesn't mean that the Bible stole these stories from the Hamitic and Japhetic people. No. But let's get this word ham. And that's what you get. Hum. So when they say Kim. Kim or Kemetic. It's a Hebrew word and it means hot or heat. In chemistry, okay, what does chemistry mean? Uh, basically, heat, friction, okay? They're studying the elements. What gets things going? Hum is the word, okay? <laughs> but but you, 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 uh, you, you tell them that, okay? And what, what will they lean on? They'll lean on these devils. They'll lean on uh, uh, the, what these people tell them. Okay, this guy and tell you, you you're crazy and you're following this guy. This is how bugged out our people are. All right. Now, let's go back to where we are, uh, were in Isaiah, Isaiah 30 and one. Woe to the rebellious children, save the Lord that take counsel, but not of me and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin unto sin. See, Jake wants to be Hamitic, African. They want to be everything else but Israelites. You tell them they're Israelites, they laugh. See? But 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 this dude, 
this dude here, let me get this one out of here. We don't need that one. Okay, he comes and gives you a speech telling you he's the J-O-O and you an African. Okay? In the speech, you can read it. You know, um, he's basically set up. Okay? Because when you when you look at African-American studies and us being linked to African being taught in schools, it was these two individuals who were really at the forefront of it. Okay? Franz Boas. Here's his, uh, you know, his little profile if you want to know a little bit about him. You know, it says here he was one of the most prominent opponents of the then popular ideologies of scientific racism. See, he opposed what the other Edomites were saying. All right. And was looked at as the good guy by Jake. But look what he gave them. He, he linked you to Africans. All right. Which ultimately Jake. All right. We, we were in Africa. Right. But they know who we are. All right. <laughs> we we were in Africa. All right. We still have people scattered in Africa until this day. OK. People think that we have this big issue with Africa. I mean, the, the landmass of Africa is beautiful. OK. But what we're, we're telling you is that we're not Africans. We're not Hamites because really it's no such thing as an African. OK. The, the, the term Africa goes back to a contemporary of. Uh, Christopher Columbus, Leo Sipius Africanus. America goes back to uh, uh, Amerigo Vespucci. See? And if you tell Jake these things, they're the main ones to buck up against you. Okay? So like one of the elders said, you know, if, if, a, if a nigga can't get it, we moving on. You ain't going nowhere with that garbage doctrine, that back to Africa talk. Because Ghana has opened up many opportunities for jake to go back to africa and how many of them have went a few all right but where is jake they're still here okay so he 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 uh pretty much was looked at as a hero by jake when you look it up okay so and there you go early life and education all right. Although his grandparents were observant. All right. J.O.O.'s his parents embraced enlightenment values, including their assimilation into Germany society. All right. Yada, yada, yada. But. He himself. Was a small hat. OK. A Christian, he did not identify himself as a, a small hat. OK. But this is disputed by certain people who called him the essential Protestant. He valued autonomy above all things, according to yada, yada, yada. And you can look him up. But ultimately, he was a, he was a, a, a little hat. OK, and you know, those Germans got all kind of uh, uh, evils going on. And look who his. Uh, an, er an important early influence was the. Uh, Yada, 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 his mother's brother-in-law and a friend of Karl Marx. So you just know. <laughs> and look at Karl Marx. Look where his hand is. That whole pose. And they're all linked. Okay. Now, the other guy. Okay. Is Melville Hertzkowitz. Okay. Let's look him up. All right. Look this guy up. And these are the fathers of African-American studies. Okay. Melville Herskovitz, an American anthropologist. Okay. And what is anthropology? The study of culture, societies. Okay. Anthropology is the scientific study of humanity, concerned with human behavior, human biology, culture, societies, Linguistics in both present and past, including uh, past human species, social anthropology studies, pattern or cultural anthropology studies, culture. It says who helped first established African 
in the African diaspora studies. See, a lot of that stuff that Jake be spewing out. OK, stems from the devil who wanted to confuse them. See, in American academia. OK. It says he is known for exploring the cultural continuity from African cultures. All right. As expressed in African-American communities. He worked with his wife, Frances Herskovitz, also an anthropologist, all right, in the field of South America, the Caribbean, and Africa. They jointly wrote several books and monographs, and Jake holds dear to these books. But look at him, born to ish immigrants. Okay, so both of them were ish. Okay? Both of them were ish. And we know damn well those people don't mean us any good. What does the scripture say? Okay, never trust. OK. So. Let's see here. Going back here. OK, what is he best known for? He's the father of modern all right, anthropology. OK, that's what Franz Boaz is known for. OK. And you can do your own research on these two individuals, which, of course, there's more. OK. But these individuals is who Jake really, really uh, looked up to. Okay. Check this out. Founder of Northwestern uh, University's Anthropology Department in 1938 and founder of the university's program of African-American studies. And he was one of the main ones responsible for African-American studies being a, a, a uh, something that you had to study. All right. And being promoted in schools. See. Check this out. See if I can pull this up. And while that's uh, being pulled up, let's go back to Isaiah. There's Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30. All right. And one, woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin unto sin. That walk down into Egypt and have not axed at my mouth, who's the mouth of the Lord, the prophets. We're here to tell you who you are and strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and trust in the shadow of Egypt and the shadow of Egypt is Babylon at the end of the day. Verse seven, for the Egyptians shall help in vain. OK, the Egyptians shall help in vain. <laughs> All right. And to no purpose. Therefore, have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. Let's read this in the NLT. OK. It says. Egypt's promises are worthless, therefore. I call her Rahab, the harmless dragon. OK, and Egypt is known as a dragon as well in prophecy. When you go into uh, a lot of uh, scriptures, it associates Egypt with the dragon. OK, and in this time, all right, the modern day Egypt is read by the red dragon, Esau Edom. OK, let's go here. Check this out. Herskovitz at the heart of blackness. Show you how simple Jake is. You know he's the devil. What is a Negro in the sense that the term is used in the United States? Obviously, one only has to look at the great degree of crossing, the tremendous variation in color that marked American Negroes. I hear the voice of Melville J. Herskovitz, and what I wonder is, how did a white man come to know so much about black people? Probably more than any other American, Melville Herskovitz is the person who demonstrates that African Americans are connected to Africans. He was a leading... You see that? ...anthropologist of the 20th century, but he was also a kind of social paradox. 
If you look at Herskovitz through one angle, he sets the terms for our understanding of the relationship between Africa and black people in the Americas. From another angle, you might see him as someone who appropriates a certain kind of knowledge. From another angle, he's the son of Jewish immigrants and he's trying to sort out his own position in America. I always like to think of him as kind of the Elvis of African American studies. On the one hand, you might think of someone like Elvis as someone who takes things that blacks have already been doing and he gets the credit for them. On the other hand, you could say, well, here's a guy who actually mainstreams rock and roll. Herskowitz mainstreams some of these ideas about the connections between African and African American culture. Herskowitz contributes a book length research manuscript to the Carnegie study that was eventually published separately in 1941. It was called The Myth of the Negro Past. Now see, when you deal with these devils, they're very, very tricky. Okay? <laughs> Let's read this. This is the book of uh, Lamentations 4 and 17. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that cannot save us. They hunt our steps. All right? That we cannot go out in our streets our end is near, our days are fulfilled, our end is come. Our persecutors are swifter than eagles, all right? Swifter than the eagles of heaven. They pursued us on the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. Now, this is going back to what happened when the uh, temple was destroyed by the Babylonians and the Edomites helped. But again, that which is then is now, okay? These devils have, have, have very, very many devices set up to destroy you, and they're their uh, energy goes back to the serpent. So they're able to present something to you. All right. That sounds great. All right. And make it sound as if it's something to better you or help you, but it's taking you backwards. That's the, one of the great and many gifts this devil has on the left hand side. Okay. It says. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord, was taken in their pits of whom we said under his shadow we shall live among the heathen and this is a prophecy because watch what it goes into because the the edomites helped the babylonians all right but look what, what what jeremiah says in spirit rejoice and be glad o daughter of edom that dwelleth in the land of Uz. the cup shall also pass through unto thee what's the cup slavery because at this time jeremiah is lamenting over the temple being destroyed and the famine and what's happening to his people that's what this book is about, right? And the Edomites had a big, big part to do with that, all right? And even David prophesied of how they're going to eventually pay for that. So you got a lot to pay for. You got to pay for what you did as 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 uh, Cain, uh, the serpent, you know, and everything you've done as Esau. So I don't know how y'all going to uh, make it to that a thousand year. The cup shall also pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. Now, what I wanted to get is Revelation 20. Okay? Because when these devils got into power, from the Renaissance till now, all they've done is lie. Revelation 20 and 7. Okay, and when a thousand years are expired, we always go into that a thousand year period going into the uh, fall of the Western Roman Empire. All right. And, and ultimately, then you have the Dark Ages, the Byzantine Empire, the Eastern Roman Empire, which was Jake ruling. OK, and Esau was looked down upon, pushed into the caves, you know, the scattered. You know, it, 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 he was known that he wasn't good. So after that, a thousand year period. All right. Satan, all right, which ultimately what led to this thousand year period uh, being ended, the Black Death. Why was it called the Black Death? The Newbonic and Boombonic Plague, because Jake, OK, was uh, the Lord sent plagues to pretty much weaken Jake's rulership and the devil. All right. After the thousand year period was loosed from his prison. People really think this is speaking of the spiritual demon Satan. OK who was in a pit somewhere waiting for his uh, sentence to be up. No, 
the children of Satan, he who comes after the working of Satan, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8 through 9, shall be loosed out of prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. What did he do? He spread renaissance pseudoscience garbage all throughout the world went and, and undermined it. nations did evil which ultimately fulfilled the blessing that was given unto Esau that he would have the fatness of the earth because right now what we are living in is a result of the renaissance period you see and all the way up to the time where Gog and Magog is going to start all right a war and come against Israel and America and many other nations as well are going to be joined unto them. Okay. So going back, let's go back here to this video. And the myth of the Negro past would be the best known and most controversial book of Herskovitz's entire career. In the myth of the Negro past, Herskovitz is saying that the significance of his work is to show the dynamism complexity of African culture and the influences they've had on African American cultures. See, he's he's linking you Negroes to Africans, Hamites. And he's trying to engage in a type of social engineering himself in that book. His argument is that if African Americans know this, that their self image and their self respect would be increased. I will always be grateful to Melville J. Herskovitz for the contribution he made to my sense of self. This man said that like every other people on earth, I had a culture and that it, that it could be traced back to a place called Africa. But the connection between Africa and American black people wasn't a new idea. Du Bois had written about it decades before Herskovitz. Was Du Bois was a sellout. All right. Probably an Edomite too, a tear. But Herskovitz is able to add the data that they just don't have access to. Look. It's understandable that some people resisted the thought that central to understanding African American studies could be a book by, by a white person. Was Herskovitz able to do so much research on these questions because he's white? He was set up. Because he had a certain kind of privilege that other black scholars didn't have? So there you go. And this is a, a classic case, all right, of never trusting your enemy. Let's get that. Sirach the 12th chapter Sirach 12 and 10 Never trust thine enemy Like as iron rusted So is his wickedness Though he humble himself And go crouching Take good heed And beware of him And thou shalt be Unto him As if thou Has wiped a looking glass And thou shalt know That his rust Have not altogether been wiped Set him not by thee Which that's what these jakes did Less when he have overthrown thee, and then they use particular sellouts to get the, these people closer to Jake. Because Jake would be reluctant, but then if a particular notable leader, okay, the, the, the case in point, all right, uh, uh, when Margaret Sanger and those, you know, uh, other demons wanted to introduce baby deletions into our culture, the A B O R T I O Ns. Right. Who did they go to? She went to the uh, 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 black pastors and said the easiest way into the Negro mind is through spiritual leaders. OK. That's 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 a fact. Jack. OK. So set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand lest he seek to take thy seat and thou at last remember my words and be pricked therewith. And Jake is getting ready to be pricked. See, when, when Jake gets pricked and you know how they're going to be pricked because it's a serpent, right? Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with the serpent or such as come nigh wild beast? And what, what Jake, what all of this trust in Esau is going to lead to you all is getting that haragma. And you're going to remember the words of the prophets. 
And we're not going to have pity for you because you trusted this guy. So one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins, who will pity? For a while he will abide with thee, but if, if thou wilt begin to fall, he will not tarry. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but his heart, in his heart he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. He will, uh, he will weep with his eyes. They're not, they're not. Because he challenged, these two challenged the, uh, the, the, the standard thoughts on Jake back then. So they were looked at as Jake as, wow, they, they're giving us a culture. See? So he was speaking sweetly with his lips, but his heart is not with you. He's, 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 a, he's an Amalekite. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. See? You're going to see him there first. And there was a lot of adversity uh, uh, on Jake. All right, doing the, the you know the the British and early Americans, okay, Americas, thirteen colonies leading up to this everything being formed, right? And though he pretend to help thee, yet he shall undermine thee. See, though he pretend to help thee, yet he shall undermine thee. So he's pretending to help you, but you're being undermined. <laughs> Have a few more videos, then we'll close this out. Okay. Franz Boas, all right, rejection of scientific racism in the 20th century. Bellis's work to refute scientific racism was based on biological differences between races in physical anthropology and cast doubt on decades of scientific racial discrimination. Early 20th century American society predominantly believed that Native Africans were representative of a generation of the human race that had become stuck on the evolutionary timeline. See, that was this is they were studying your skulls, all of that that uh garbage that Darwin passed down, which his uncle started all that mess. It wasn't just him. Okay, the study of the uh the the, the species <laughs> which th there was a bunch of high Edomites just creating theories. And those theories run this world and they, a lot of them are rooted in Babylon, Sumeria. Okay, so this is with Jake. A lot of Christians, Jake believed this. And when you go to those Egyptology cats, a lot of them believe we have an ancestor named Lucy. Okay. All you have to do is just type in Lucy ancestor. And who, who is it? Okay. Who is a nigga? And, and and I remember Polite did a video, which he's all over the place. You don't know what he believes in. Back in the day, he did a video suggesting that this was our ancestor. Where did they get that from? That goes back to Esau, all right, and pseudoscience. See? A 3.2 million year old fossil. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was discovered in Ethiopia. So this this is our this is this is what we're supposed to believe. And under all of that deep big words, all of that stuff Jake is talking in, in those Egyptology movements and this is what they really believe. But these two, Franz and uh uh, uh Melville <laughs> rejected those ideologies and said no. We have a culture for them. Evolutionary timeline. This conservative theory is represented by Josiah Knott's three skull comparison, which employed craniology to scientifically prove the inferiority of Native Africans and Americans. Many anthropologists who were principally evolutionists chose to interpret the similarities between Negro and monkey skulls as signifying them to be lesser human beings and their differences to Westerners as mental and physical inferiorities. Using the three skull comparison, Knott also asserted that Negroes were less developed than Europeans due to their evolutionary resemblance to chimpanzees and were thus of lesser intelligence and cultural civilization. Right. That's the three fifths of a human being. And that's written into American law. Right. That's where that came from. You're a savage. You're a beast. 
This was further supported by Darwin's theory of evolution when it was applied to society in a form of social Darwinism. So yeah, Darwin came up with a lot of that crap. And it was passed on, and then these two came at a time with another philosophy that, nah, they have a culture. Allowing those in power to scientifically justify their dominance. They scientifically justified uh, murdering and, and doing evil. Castrating. Okay, and, and, and the whole eugenics and all of that is tied to these mindsets. And you best believe everything that they're doing now, okay, which they, they do it to their own as well, is going to be rooted in these ideologies. Indeed, white Americans were becoming obsessed with the notion that science-promoted theories could justify and explain the racialized system that prevailed in their country. White Americans used social Darwinism to further justify their cultural superiority and maltreatment of other cultures. As the theory endorsing scientific racism, social Darwinism was thus applied to justify discrimination of marginalized cultures. So Franz Boas rejected, okay, a lot of that, uh, you know, that pseudoscience, okay? And you can look him up, okay? He's like a hero amongst Jake, okay? And basically... Jake thinks that these these Look, I, these people uh, mean them well. Okay. Throughout my content, so that you may be inspired to conduct your own research using those same key factors manifested within my works. Now, with all of that being said. Let's go back in time a little to where this fictitious propaganda was cultivated and implemented into our mindsets as a fact of one-sided historic information. Melville Jean Herskovics was born on September 10th, 1895 in Bellefontaine, Ohio to two Jewish immigrant parents who immigrated from parts of Europe to North America during the mid 1800s. His mother, Henrietta Hart, was an immigrant from Germany, and his father, Hermann Herskovics, was an immigrant from Hungary. Before becoming a teenager, the family moved to El Pasco, Texas in 1905. Then, soon after his mother abruptly passed away from a mysterious illness, Melville and his father moved to Erie, Pennsylvania, where Melville later graduated from Erie Senior High School in 1912. Melville began his college studies at the University of Cincinnati while simultaneously taking Rabinacle studies at the Hebrew Union College, Cincinnati campus, hmm. as traditionally suggested by his family, being as though the college is a Jewish institution of religion. When the United States involved themselves in the conflict known as World War I on July 28, 1914, history loves to state that Melville allegedly quelled his studies to enlist in the quote, Army's medical corps and headed off to Europe. Now, keep in mind that his mother was from Germany and his father from Hungary, in which both places, including Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire, fought against Russia, Italy, France, Japan, Romania, Great Britain, and of course, the United States. What's very noteworthy here is which side of the conflict Melville allegedly subscribed to, because there is no actual records of him enrolling in the United States Army in the first place. Yeah, and I'm just getting started here. Now, when he returned to North America, Melville transferred to the University of Chicago at a time where anthropology was heavily influenced by the deceitful hidden agendas of industrialism, along with political European colonialism, where pseudoscientific theories were not only praised by one particular group of people, but justified for its subjugation of all non-white people. Before World War I began, in a speech directed to accredited businessmen, President Woodrow Wilson stated that henceforth public policy will be geared to providing a public education tailored to producing industrial workers who did not question orders and were skilled in only basic manual labors, and that a liberal education will be reserved for only for a small elite. By the early 1900s, American industrialists recognized that compulsory public education was the most useful means to socially engineer the American population to suit the purposes of industrial capitalism. 
Local networks of corporate foundations, university education and psychological departments, educational accrediting boards, and governmental agencies arose to oversee the implementation of the blueprint for this ambitious but yet so devastatingly evil social engineering project. These entities included organizations such as the Rockefeller Foundation, the Carnegie Foundation, the Columbia Teachers College, the University of Chicago, the National Training Labs, the National Education Association, and the U.S. Office of Education, now known as the Department of Education. Andrew Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, John D. Rockefeller, and Henry Ford were the key contributors and introductional architects of this American educational system of forced schooling. According to Lee D. Baker, an author and a cultural anthropologist out of Duke University, he admitted that the 19th century physical anthropologist drew specious correlations between anatomical features and supposed behavior traits of the various races. So in other words, these immigrants of Jewish or other European or African descent of the 19th century, or rather the 1800s, purposely created and cultivated the science of anthropology with highly regarded racial discriminatory, very I Pseudoscience. Let's get the book of, uh... Second Thessalonians real quick. I didn't even know this video was up here, but hey, he's, he's breaking it down even more further. Right. Hey, call hello. You how about Shmiel Shai? Second Thessalonians chapter two and eight. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, the prophets and destroy with the brightness of his coming, the chariots, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Okay, again, this word lying wonders, okay, is what? I thought this was going to be a short video, but it's, it's a lot. Pseudos, okay, a lie, conscious and intentional falsehood in a broad sense, whatever is not what it seems to be. Perverse and pious, deceitful precepts, even that slave Bible goes into this. And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. See, Jake really believes in Esau. And for this cause, God gets sent, shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie and that they might be damned who believe not the truth and had pleasure in unrighteousness because they believe in the God of this world. Really, the God of this world, if our gospel be hid, it is it is hid to them who are lost and who the God of this world have blinded the minds. Jake can't get around or uh, away from what Esau has instilled in them. See? <laughs> and see right here in verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Hold to the traditions which you have been taught. We are Israelites, whether by word or by our epistle, man. We're Israelites. We're not uh, uh, hermetic. Okay, the Hamites are, 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 are nasty and through. We ain't them. And they ain't you. All right. Wake the hell up. Identical to the pseudoscientific concepts designed and utilized by Francis Gowton. Uh oh. That he called YouTuber traits of the various races. So in other words, these immigrants of Jewish or other European or African descent of the 19th century, or rather the 1800s, purposely created and cultivated the science of anthropology with highly regarded racial discriminatory, very identical to the pseudoscientific concepts designed and utilized by Francis Galton that he called eugenics, right along with his predecessor, Charles Darwin, with his theory of evolution and natural selection, in which I mentioned more about this on my documentary called, What's the Real Identity of an African American? I highly recommend that you watch that video as well. All right, and, and hey, chew out the, you know, spit out the bones, you know, because, you know, Jake is uh, a lot of philosophies Jake is uh, into. Even when they expose one thing, they'll go off on others, you know. Now, getting back to Melville, he abruptly halted his studies at the Hebrew Union College and then moved on to complete his graduate studies at Columbia University. What's very important to note here is while working on his master's and PhD, Melville found himself under the guidance of his professor named Franz Boas, a German immigrant from Minden, Germany, who migrated to North America during the year 1887. Franz Uri Boas was considered to be the sole author of American anthropology. In fact, he was dubbed as the grandfather of American anthropology by his self-proclaimed significant students, with Melville being one look of at, them. Look at this guy. As a professor of anthropology at Columbia University began... Come on, man. Look at this guy. In 1899, France heavily influenced. You think he wanted to help you? Many prominent people that we know of today, all the way up until his death on December 21st, 1942, and some of whom shares the same hue of complexion as you and I. 
France had its own hidden agenda, but history loves to paint the picture as if it was done for the better good. Right. In fact, it was designed to upkeep the continuation of manipulative indoctrination. For example, France promoted an idea that Negroes residing in America are all somehow descendants of Africans in Africa, based solely on the fact that we all share the same hue of complexion, and that's it, meaning that's all of the evidence he had. <laughs> Now, keep in mind that this was the first time ever in history where people overheard rumors that Negroes are somehow Africans now. Then, the Harvard taught sociologist and one of the co-founders of the NAACP and the first so-called person of color to even earn a doctorate at this time named W.E.B. Du Bose took this fictitious idea to new heights, being as though he was considered to be a person of color, providing another side of social engineering influence amongst people that shared his same hue of complexion. In fact, France Boaz influenced W.E.B. Du Bose in his teachings, even while being a professor of sociology, economics, and history at Atlanta University. France taught and told Melville Herskovics, along with his other students, and even W.E.B. Du Bose, what to do and what not to do by sending private letters back and forth throughout the years of the early 1900s. Then soon after his fictitious idea transitioned into a plan, it was later implemented into U.S. history books systematically. But of course, France had assistance, and the majority of this assistance is credited to Melville, being as though he began to create the anthropometric studies of the so-called African Americans, while simultaneously releasing science fictional and general fictional books, like for example, The Cattle Complex in East Africa in 1926. This science of anthropology dramatically changed once Melville introduced his out of Africa theory, during a time when biological theory still prevailed in anthropology during the late 1920s, in which the underlining belief was that so-called blacks were genetically inferior to whites. Now, in order to draw all of the credit and attention to his own work for possible federal funding, Melville mysteriously but yet purposely had a fallen out with W.E.B. Du Bose and began to state that Du Bose's work is inaccurate and filled with propaganda sabotaging DeBose's quote, Encyclopedia Africana project by burning its credibility straight to the ground. Soon after that, Melville gained higher political power, then quickly received funding from wealthy private foundations and multiple federal government agencies, like the National Research Council, for example, which was established by special request from President Woodrow Wilson in 1916. What's very important to note here is DeBose's reputation was purposely attacked by the same people that established it in the first place. In other words, DeBose pledged himself under a form of order by a particular prominent group of wealthy Jews to help assist with manipulating the minds of those he could reach. And as soon as that goal was met, DeBose's entire operation was shut down. And even DeBose himself tried his very best to bring multiple prominent people of color down along with him. Side note, you would consistently see DeBose and Booker T. Washington side by side for a very particular reason. And by the way, it is not a coincidence that soon after these so-called black men visited each and every prosperous black Wall Street across America, these areas dubbed as Negro or Black Wall Streets were immediately destroyed in more ways than just one. Mm. Now, around this time, Melville was single-handedly emerging as an iconic figure in America. But the so-called funding that he received that I mentioned earlier was not to help him with researching and discovering publicly verifiable evidence as the story loves to claim. No, the funding was yet an advancement of his salary, set up for him to be paid to create and produce a story that millions of people were unfamiliar with. What I mean by that is, Melville is solely responsible for expanding the lines of storytelling, in which in turn it was later considered to be American history, by completely reversing the records of historic information by creating a fictional story about African slaves immigrating to the Americas by way of the Spaniards during the 1500s. This story is known as the Middle Passage. However, prior to Melville's fictional story, no information existed in history that clearly mentioned that the so-called Negroes of the American lands literally came from Africa. It was said that Melville allegedly took a trip to somewhere in Africa, meaning that there is absolutely no record of this, just a story, gathered up a few artifacts from there, observed a few tribes and a few cultures, and dubbed it as Africanism, then traveled back to the U.S., wrote a book, called The Myth of the Negro Past and published it in 1942 in the fictional section where he claimed that the people of color in America somehow lost connection with their cultural past during the Middle Passage from Africa to the Americas. All right. Now, we did come over here on slave ships, but as you can see, this guy has an agenda. And as you can see, this guy is one of those individuals who's probably of the uh, mindset that there were no slave ships. You know, you got a lot of jakes that's on that tip. All right. And we believe in what the prophecy said. We would come into Egypt again on ships. All right. So, again, with these individuals, you do got to, you know, spit out the bones. You know, they give good information. But that this is most likely one of those jakes who are saying that uh, we were already here 
and this is our land and you know ultimately uh you what you did have israelites over here all right the northern kingdom okay and they were described as darker skin okay now a lot of them come lighter in skin all right because of being you know uh, uh taken down and mixing in you know uh putting seed in you know edomite women and you know even uh, uh the edomite slave masters putting seed in the israelite women all right but the the the, the tribes of israel are still here all right via the spirit and the seed of their fathers all right the scripture said that the seed of israel would always be here and this is why we have to go by the spirit but anyway um this was a good video this was a, it was some good information here all right but as you can see these devils all right have nothing but but uh, uh propaganda okay and again they know who we are okay they know exactly who we are you see and our people were in Africa. You see, the Jews were in Africa. All right, point blank period. You see? Now, let's finish off here in the book of uh, Second Edger 6 and 27. For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched as for faith that shall flourish corruption shall be overcome and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared and this is where we are okay and this is why this devil he no longer controls the narrative he's on the ropes all right so hopefully you brothers and sisters were edified um on to the next shalom on.